smart thinking is an opportunity. We just need to understand what is the current situation and why we need smart thinking. And we've heard some excellent tactical work going on, both in Pune um, and also Birmingham and elsewhere in, in the world, and has mentioned or, or referenced that. But I just want to be quite blunt about why we're here. And I'm stimulated by two things. Firstly, something that the Assistant Commissioner said just now, it, it's about human beings. It's about human beings. And yesterday, when we visited the hospital, myself and my colleague, uh, Councillor Hamilton, were talking, because we're both from the health service in, in the UK, and we we're both talking about what it used to be like 30 years ago in the UK and what it's like now with mass-produced food going to hospitals. And our colleague who took us around the hospital said, food's too important to do that. Food is too important to do that. And if I look back at where we are in Birmingham and the UK and the Western world, and I think about what I see in Pune, We've forgotten about food. In the hurly-burly of the changing world we live in, we've forgotten about food and how important it is and actually how critical it is in our life. And I'm just going to pick up three things. Firstly, a colleague in the UK called David Barker, 25 years ago, showed how your birth weight predicts your whole life course. An excellent book called The Fetal Origins of Life. And he actually showed that your birth weight predicts how long you live, whether you'll get a severe infection like TB, whether you'll have an accident. Really good piece of work. And that's been now, it's been replicated in, in lots and lots of countries. But what that also stimulated was further research into that whole fetal period. Because this is really why it's so critical. And what the research showed is that for mothers who are pregnant, the second term of pregnancy is vital. And if they go into that second term starved, and they carry on being starved, the baby will be small. If they go into that second term starved and they eat more, the baby may grow but will have problems which I'll come back to. And what, the, what he also showed and colleagues have showed is that if there's a starved mother who's then fed or the baby is small and fed too much, they run into problems much later on. And guess what? The problems are diabetes and hypertension. And these are some of the things my colleague Shireen mentioned in the Tarza Trust. So this is strong link between nutrition at birth and future life events. The worst thing you can do is overfeed a stunted baby. But it's even worse than that, because there's also good evidence that it's not just the mother, it's the grandmother. Because guess what? The ovaries of the mother are actually produced in the grandmother. The gametes are produced in the grandmother. So it's the grandmother's nutrition is important. And that's been shown, it was shown in the Second World War when they starved, uh, the Germans starved a, Dutch, uh, a large Dutch female cohort, and the, and the grandchildren were still stunted. So it's not just the mother, it's the grandmother. And guess what? Mothers have both boys and girls. So actually, by not feeding mothers, both boys and girls are affected. And that is a generational issue. And that is why 
food is really, really important. And I won't talk about, last night I was taking pictures and showing you that food is important in our quality of life. We have our families, we talk, and yesterday we had loads of food. And it's, it's a way of life, it's a way of socialising, it's a way of greeting and meeting and saying hello to your friends and family. And of course, economically, the impact on food is really important. And certainly in the UK and the Western world, we've forgotten food. We've allowed big companies to take over. And actually, in this drive, and one of the big things that we see in the Western world is both mothers and fathers are at work. We have got to the point now in the UK where some of the new houses being built do not have a kitchen. They do not have a kitchen. Yep. Because the mothers and fathers are at work and they buy in and they use a microwave or they have takeouts. One, uh, you, you've seen Uber app with a big, big app in uh, England called Just Eat. They just order what they want and it comes in quarter of an hour. That's technology for you. You may not like it, but it's there. So I'm not going to get into, what I'm trying to say is we are a product of our society. And all these factors come together. But we need to understand that food is important. And it's time to start remembering. And if nothing else, smart cities is a way to start putting food back on the agenda. Not just because we like it. Fantastic food we've had in India. I'll tell you, we had amazing food. But it's not just because we like it. It's because it's really important. I won't talk about vitamin D and TB and all these things that there's loads of research now about. But in the smart city, we can start reframing the question and start understanding how we use all these threats as opportunities. There's a, there's a Greek, one of the Greek, um, I can't remember which one it is, talks about Pandora's box. When they open the box and all these horrible, nasty things come out, and right at the bottom is hope. You can't put stuff back in the box. But you can use what comes out of the box to disrupt the system. And I would say part of this collaboration is to understand how you don't put stuff back in the box but how you use it to disrupt the system and I you know I, yesterday it, you know we're both big councils and corporations we buy a whole load of stuff we give school meals to hundreds of thousands of kids a day there's stuff that we can do there's stuff that we're doing but we can do more of we talked about plastics. Using our muscle is really important, but in a smart way for a smart solution. So I'll stop there because my colleague wants to speak, and I've probably gone on too long. But smart, this whole thing is let's not forget food and how important it is, not just for us as people, but for our future children and grandchildren. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Phillips, for sharing your experienced words. Now I would